Hiya, I'm Judy, obstetrician, gynecologist and fertility specialist in Perth. Um, today I'm going to talk about a very important topic, which is a question often asked by mums-to-be who are aiming for a natural birth. The question is whether should we have induction of labour or should we wait for natural onset of labour until later in pregnancy. I will divide these videos into three parts. First, uh, I would um, start with explaining the background and the latest scientific research. Secondly, I will show the important scientific research papers, international guidelines. And, and the third part, I will then let you know what's my rec recommendation and what would I do in my practice. I would like to emphasize that um, in the high quality obstetric care, we are aiming for healthy mum, healthy baby, and if possible, avoid unnecessary intervention, i.e. if possible, we would like a natural labour and delivery. Now, this is um, for presumably healthy mum and baby, because if there's any uh, major concern for baby and mum, sometimes we do need to deliver um, earlier in the pregnancy. But, you know, if for mums and babies who are quite well until 39 weeks, 40 weeks, what should we do in this instance? As we know, science is fluid. Um, our practices should change when we have scientific research in showing what is the best practice um, lately. So um, I'll start with explaining the traditional background of induction. If you look at before 2019, even before last year, um, what we have been taught for many, many years even when I was a student, when I was training, and you know, for many years as a consultant, um, we would think, look, you know, um, well, certainly for uh, women who are aiming for natural birth, we try to avoid unnecessary cesarean section. So the idea is, look, you know, don't induce anyone at any stage unnecessarily. Max it up, wait as long as possible if it is safe. So, for example, up to 41, 42 weeks. The idea is because the less intervention you do, the more likely that there's a chance of natural birth, um, i.e. avoiding a cesarean section. In the scientific community, we often ask questions on whether um, whatever we practice is the best practice, is our belief true in real life. So a group of scientists um, and researchers in the States in 2019 looked into many women um, going through delivery of babies. So they looked into patients who um, has had induction of labor at 39, 40 weeks compared to patients who waited until 41, 42 weeks. What they found is actually very interesting. They say, look, actually, if you have induction of labor at 39, 40 weeks, it is um, slightly safer. And also, there's a lower chance of having cesarean section. I'll show you the, late, the paper a bit later on in part two of this video. Um, yeah, this raised a very interesting question. So, you know, why is it so um, by waiting, why is the chance of cesarean section higher? Um, number one, if you think, look, baby should continue to keep growing inside the womb. So if you wait up to, you know, after 39 weeks, you have 40 weeks, 41 weeks, so um, even 42 weeks. So two to three weeks later, you're going to have a bigger baby. So um, it is harder to push out a bigger baby. Sometimes they're too big, they can fit in, then you, you will have to do a cesarean section. And secondly, the placenta function as well, perhaps continue to drop after 40 weeks. So placenta is very important because it does nourish the baby, gives baby all the nutrients that babies need. So up to a stage that you know the function starts to decline and they don't work as well. So perhaps when baby go through labor, um, and if baby doesn't get enough uh, support and nutrient, then they, they can show sign of tiredness and they don't like labor, they're not coping with labor. And sometimes, you know, by checking, you realize that to be safe, you have to do an emergency cesarean section. So, yep, I'm going on to part two to show you the papers. This is New England Journal of Med Medicine, a very good journal. And uh, um, I'm going to go on. They have quite a few research, um, and they are pointing towards um, quite similar outcomes, uh, which we'll go through with them. A second paper. 
published in 2019 as well, um, looking into the results of the trials and um, basically they, they use computer model to look at the results um, in, an, uh, in a scientific way. Another one, I, it's quite a similar story. Um, I thought I would scroll down, scroll down and show you the, some of the results. Um, you know, what they say is if you have induction, you have a decreased risk of cesarean section, um, less chance of uh, getting blood pressure in the mum towards later on in pregnancy, um, less chance of baby needs to have support in their breathing, going to baby unit, um, etc, etc. If you go to my website, um, the next thing I'm going to show you is the guidelines from the United States. Um, you know the patient information um, as some of you may be already familiar with my guidelines there's a section called free health advice scroll down pregnancy I've just added in induction of labor at 39 weeks USA if you click there um, yeah this is the one that information for the kind of the general public so um, they explain things um, you know should we have induction and what, what are the pros and cons um, which I'm going to talk about um, now if you look at these guidelines this is from the United States um, they would say look you know the uh, recommendation is um, can I have induction uh, you may talk about induction they say look you, sh you, you have the option of doing that um, uh, to have induction at 39 weeks not all international guidelines has um, have adopted this approach yet for example if you look at uk or most of the public hospital in uh, australia in wa certainly we don't routinely offer induction this early at 39 weeks based on various factors one of the thing is you have to think whether you have the resources do you have the rooms the staff to look after patients if you know many of them will come in for induction at 39 weeks okay, okay. Um, yeah looking at the papers um, certainly there are pros and cons for a you know induction and no no induction of labor so induction of labor means around 39 weeks you come in um, the, the pros is we have looked into those paper we know the, the benefit the downside is it is a process because if someone goes into labor themselves uh, what it means is your body produces all the hormones that you need for labor to start and to keep on. Sometimes, look, if it slows down or anything, you do need to have, we call augmentation to help the labor process by drugs as well. But let's say, look, you know, we, we decide to induce at 39 weeks. There's a process. The hormones usually produced by the body naturally, we will keep it from outside. So um, usually coming to the hospital, we would start with giving some hormones vaginally and that could last for usually about 12 hours. Um, and after that, you break the water and sometimes put up the drip as well if you need to towards later on to help the womb, the hormones will make the womb contract and we continue to monitor, keep an eye on babies and such. And there are talks in, in um, you know, on whether do you need more pain control for induction of labor look induction of labor you speed up the process a little bit because some people start labor some people go on very quickly here you know some people deliver baby within a few hours some people take days and days and days and days for induction use using the drug you can push things on move on a bit faster so if you feel pain a bit faster then um, you know you can ask for pain control so is it a good or you know some women might prefer to go slowly taking their time, hours up and hours and hours, maybe a few days to get the labor, to proper labor to establish. Or some say, look, you know, I prefer to be fast, uh, faster by the induction process. Um, so stronger contraction to start a bit faster. But pain control can be used in either induction or natural starting of labor, spontaneous onset of labor. Um, yeah, uh, you know, in summary, pros, we have seen, you know, less chance of cesarean section uh, and, and um, perhaps maybe slightly safer. Most patients are fine, by the way. Um, 
but you know it does show that it does improve chance of natural birth and the downside is this artificial a bit more intervention you have to come into the hospital to start the process rather than naturally starting it now part three um, of the uh, this video what do I do what's my recommendation if I have patients um, you know all my patients fit and healthy 39 40 weeks i do discuss i go with the united states recommendation i discuss the pros and cons and like all my other practices i do offer patients the options and we knowing that the risk slightly increase of you know risk of pregnancy is very slowly increasing after 35 years old towards 40 years old so um yeah we look into the pros and cons making plans and take it from there for all my patients. They have a choice, they have the options. Patients around 40 years old and above, I do advise delivery before 40 weeks because there are suggestions scientifically that the percenta of uh, patients at uh, 40 years old or above, or nearly, nearly 40, the function is, you know, when you're 39 years old, the function is as good as someone much younger um, at, the, at the placenta stage of 41 to 42 weeks. So really at 39, 40 weeks for um, women in higher age group, 40 and above or around 40, the placenta actually, you know, at 39, they're functioning, it's starting to decline significantly. So based on this, if, you know, around 40 and above, I do recommend to say, look, you know, perhaps not wait after your due date, but younger patients, depending on the, stories we have i do offer patients as much choice as we can that's about it for today okay goodbye